So this video just reviews what rates are. We talked a little bit about these at the beginning of the introduction of this unit. Um, so remember that rates are comparing things that have two different units. For example, when you're on the highway and you see a, the posted speed limit, 100 kilometers per hour, that is a rate. Um, so 12 baskets in four games, that's a rate. Um, a unit rate would be what one that game would be. So if you score 12 baskets in four games, how many baskets would you score in one game? That would be a unit rate. So three baskets in one game is a unit rate. To get that, we just divided 12 by 4 and 4 by 4. Um, so if you're going 1,200 kilometers and you're doing it in 10 hours, how do you get the unit rate? Well, you just do 1,200 divided by 10. You don't have to show your work. I'm just showing it here so that you know where it comes from. And that would be a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Notice units must have units. Okay, It isn't a rate unless it has the units. So that's really, really important that you include the units when you're doing unit rate. So 350 centimeters in 3.5 meters, to get a unit rate, again, you just divide and you'll get 100 centimeters in one meter. 27 goals in nine games, again, you just divide, that will be three goals in one game. So that's what unit rates are. So why are they important? Well, they help us solve problems and, and figure out, so if I know how much I make per hour, I can then calculate what my salary might be for a week or so on and so forth. So they help you plan um, and they help you calculate things. So Curtis earns $52 and he works for five hours. Well, what does he make per hour? Well, again, to do that, you just do 52 divided by five and you're going to get 10, the calculator will say 10.4. Now remember, because it's money, we make that $10.40 per hour. So then it says, how much would he make if he worked for eight hours? Well, one thing that you can now do is take the unit rate, $10.40 in one hour, and times it by eight hours, and get $83.20. Um, another thing that you could do if you wanted is set up a proportion. So you could say $52 in 5 hours is X dollars in 8 hours, and then you could cross, multiply, and divide, just like we were doing before. So there's more than one way of getting your answer, and then you divide both sides by 5 and you'll get your answer of $83.20. So you can kind of choose what way you like better. Often people like using a unit right better, but it's totally up to you and it's personal preference. So Jeff runs five kilometers in 30 minutes. It says what was his rate per minute? So be careful. You don't necessarily divide by the smaller number. You have to look at what it's asking. Because it's asking for the rate per minute, that means minutes comes second. So we're actually going to do kilometers, so the five, divided by the minutes. That's the rate per minute. And you're going to get a decimal on this one. You're going to get decimal 166666 repeating. Remember, we can write the repeating with a bar over it. So it's 0.166666 kilometers per minute. Now, how far would he run if he ran for two hours? We've got a little bit of a problem on this one because the rate is in minutes and this is asking us for hours. So you have to remind yourself that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So two hours is actually 120 minutes. So then you can take your 0.1666 and you times it by 120. Be really careful. Don't do 0.16. Make sure you do 0 0.166666666. 0 um, some of your calculators might say 7 at the end. It's actually not. There is no 7 at the end. What your calculator is doing is it's rounding. So if you punch into your calculator 0 0.1666666 a bunch of times, and then you times that by 120, you're going to get the most accurate answer, which is 20 kilometers.
Again, if you would like, you could do a proportion for this question. You could say 5 kilometers in 30 minutes is x kilometers in 120 minutes. And then these are nice friendly numbers, and you could say, hey, multiply that by 4 and multiply that by 4. That means x will be 20. So again, there's more than one way of doing your answer, and you can choose which way works best for you. So you can use a unit rate and then multiply, or you can set up a proportion. So unit price is kind of the same as unit rate, but it, we, inv we involve money. This is used all the time in grocery stores. So next time you're at a grocery store, if you go shopping with your mom or your dad, I want you to look on the shelf, and what it does is it breaks down the cost of an item into a unit price. It's really helpful when you're comparing which product is the best value. So if you have two different items and you're not sure which one's the better deal, compare the unit price. Often, the larger size is going to have a smaller unit price. Not always, but often. Often, the no-name brand will have a smaller unit price than the, you know, regular brand. So if you buy the, I don't know, the Heinz version of ketchup versus the PC version of ketchup or the no-name brand, the Heinz one's going to cost more. So have a look at those unit prices next time you're grocery shopping. So how do we do unit price? Well, it's the same thing as unit rate. Um, because we're dealing with money, you always, always want to do money, the cost, divided by the amount. That's always what you do for unit price. Cost divided by amount. And sometimes you're going to get some really weird answers because unit prices are not going to be very big. It won't cost a lot for one centimeter cubed or one milliliter or one gram. Those aren't very big measurements. Um, a gram of cheese, for example, picture a piece of cheese that's like the size of a sugar cube. That's not very big, so it's not going to cost a lot. So again, here, how do we do this? Well, we're going to do $3.50, the cost divided by the number that we buy, and then we'll turn that into a price and that will be 50 cents. Again, your calculator might say 0.5, but money is always two decimal places. Sometimes you're going to get unit prices, so this one be careful, you don't do 550 divided by $4.50, you always do price divided by amount. So in this one, as I was saying, sometimes you're going to get unit prices that are like crazy long decimals. Um, Unless it says otherwise, go to about three or four decimal places. So this particular one, in your calculator, it's going to be 0 0.00818.1818. So we'll round that to 0 0.0082. And so we've gone to a few decimal places. And I know that that seems strange, but we're, we're looking at really small amounts of product here. Unit price, we're not looking at very big amounts of product. Two liters of pop cost $1.99. So again, we take the price, divide by the amount we buy. Again, we're going to get a decimal for this one, but we can keep that as is. So 0.995. So almost a dollar per liter. Again, this is used to compare items. So if we look at the next problems, um, the first one is just simply asking for the unit price. So again, cost $4.50 divided by amount that you're buying. Again, sometimes you're going to get really long decimals. In this case, you're not. But if you do, you just round. So this will be $0.006 per gram, which works out to be about 0 0.6 cents per gram. This one is an interesting one. So this is what's used a lot in grocery stores, is you've got two choices the 1.5 liter bottle of Coke or the 550 milliliter bottle of Coke. And we've got to compare which one's the, the cheapest, which one's the better deal. Um, one thing that's important to notice is the units are different. This is liters. This is milliliters. We can't compare if the units are different. So you have to choose to either turn this into 1,500 milliliters because there's a 1,000 milliliters in a liter, or you can change this into 0 0.550 liters. So you can either multiply by a thousand or divide by a thousand. Doesn't matter, it's up to you. 
So let's look at the 1.5 liter bottle. It's 299, so 299 divided by 1.5, and you'll get 1.99 and then 3 repeated. So 1.99 with the three repeating per liter. The 0 .5550, sorry, 0 .550 liter or 550 milliliter bottle is a dollar ten divided by. Again, make sure that your units are the same. So in this case, we use liters. So make sure that you use liters, and that equals two dollars per liter. So which one's cheaper? This one is cheaper. So we say, therefore, the 1.5 liter bottle is the better deal. Now, just so that you are aware, what if you chose to do it using milliliters? So I'm just going to extend the page if it will let me. And we'll just bring this down so that there's, oh, it's not going to let me. Okay, I'll add a new page and show you. So what would you do if it asked you to use milliliters? So what if, or sorry, it doesn't ask you, you can choose. So what would you do if you chose to do milliliters instead? So instead, we could take the $2.99 and divide it, instead of by 1.5, we could divide it by 1,500. And we'll get point. 00199 with the three repeating. That's dollars per, whoops, that was milliliters, per milliliter. Then we take the 550 milliliter bottle, which was a dollar ten. And we get 0 0.002 per milliliter. Now again we compare. We look and we see this one is still the cheaper one. It will still be the better deal. But you'll notice if I put those two pages side by side, oh, it's not going to work on the screen. Sorry guys. I'll have to just go back. So there was the one using the cost in milliliters. Here's the one down here using the cost comparing it in liters. You're going to get the same answer. Um, they're just different numbers. And so you can choose to either deal with both being in liters or both being in milliliters. It's up to you. The key is that you make sure that the units are the same.